Okay, let's go ahead and explore opportunistic walking first. Let me go ahead and create a new page here. So we're going to look at opportunistic or optimistic walking. And this is, is quite simple. The idea is we're going to add one extra field to any model that we want to uh, let's get this right there. We want to add one field to any model that we want to deal with. And what that field name by default is lock version. And all Rails does is we this should never be touched but never touched um, by by our application code because what what rails will do is it will automatically increment each time the model is updated. So this is kind of a little counter that keeps track of uh, you're on version 2, version 3, version 4 and and so if you are trying to update a model with version 3 but it's already been updated with module the it's been already updated to version 4 you have a, a stale version of, of the model and and so let's give an example where that might happen so I'm gonna do web browser number one and web browser number two here and uh, we'll, we'll show what happens so web browser number one is gonna do a, a get so that it can uh, edit a form for our model. So let's say we're uh, dealing with a product, okay? So get uh, slash products slash one slash edit, right? So that's the URL that user number one would do. And what's gonna come back from the server is going to be a form uh, to update. So that can, we don't know how long it's going to take the user to update that product. It could be really quick, it could be really slow, we don't know how much networking is going on. Let's say in the meantime someone else decides to do the same thing and they go to slash products slash one slash edit. What's going to come back is another form to update. And how here's the key here. So we'll put this in blue. We here, let's say this was version one. This is also version make sure that's a one that is associated with with the lock version column and so whoever submits first because I got room here I'm going to uh, do it in two they do a, a patch two slash products slash one and what's going to happen on the database now is the model is going to be updated automatically for us to version 2 and things will work just fine but now let's say that web browser 1 goes ahead and tries to do its update and it does a patch to that same thing slash products slash 1 
and it's going to include our version one field for, for the lock version. And what Rails is going to do is it's going to compare this version one to this version two, and it's going to see a conflict. And it's going to immediately say, ah, oh, you have stale information. And so it's going to reject that request. Okay. And so this is a reason why you might want to do opportunistic uh, locking. In fact, in a certain sense, it's hard to do it any other way because this is a request to Rails. This is a second request to Rails. These are independent requests. They, we can't lock the database here. Let's, let's put that in something. We, we cannot do a lock here and then unlock down here because we don't know when this is coming, if it's coming, what if someone says, oh, I decided I didn't want to edit it. We're going to have a permanent lock that's never unlocked. Well, and if we time out and then they come back later, then we have a problem. So we, this is the only way in a web context that we can really deal with locking efficiently because of the stateless nature that comes back to us again. We, uh, because HTTP is stateless, we can't keep track of the fact that user1 has done a lock here and then is going to release the lock here. These, we, 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 we can't make a connection between those two. And so we need some other mechanism to help us remember that we did something here and we're relating it to here. And so that's opportunistic locking. Let me quickly try to demonstrate that in the Rails environment. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to generate a, a model and I'll just call it locking example and I'm just going to put in a, a name and I'm going to put in our lock version right here. It has to be an integer and no test framework. So when we do this, we're going to create a model in our underlying database to be able to, to handle that. We can migrate our database to, to be able to update with, with this new model. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go into the console. And I don't really want to affect the, the database here, so I'm going to run it in sandbox mode. And what we're going to see here is um, this play out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to do locking example and I'm going to create something uh, where the, the name is set to start. And then I'm going to replicate what we just had. So we'll set request one is equal to locking example let's just get that one and let's get request two now blocking example as well so now each browser has their copy of the locking example and uh, request two is going to update its name and so we'll do update two for request uh, two and we're going to go ahead and save that so the patch comes in and we, we save that file. And you can see here the SQL necessary to do that. We do an update where we set both our name and our lock version, but we have a where clause on here that makes sure that the lock version is the same, zero, as the lock version we started with. It is, so we're good this save point release is, is uh, SQLite's version of, of transactions. Every database does it a little bit differently. Uh, but now we have request one coming in and they're going to want to do an update to the product. And so we do an update and so far so good. If we look at R1 again, <clears throat> it still has a lock version of zero instead of a lock version of one that we set here. So when the request for the patch comes in from web browser number one and we try to save it, now we're, we get
craziness because what happened is when we tried to update it and we said we want to make sure that the lock version is zero we got a failure because the lock version is actually one and so we actually have a rollback so a uh, abort out of that transaction and then a, an exception is thrown active record colon, colon stale object error is the exception that is, is thrown and since we didn't catch it in the console we get a, a trace back here uh, and, and so it, it was a failure it, it didn't allow us to update our record with stale information and so it worked exactly what we want. It, we get a new version, let's say some other browser comes in and we get our locking example dot first for from that third browser we see that we still have update two and it's got the lock version and so uh, R3 could go ahead and update because it's got the most recent version of the model and so when we save, everything works because it had, did not have stale information, it had the most up-to-date version of our code.